Right guys, here we have a vermiculite piece of oven just in the uh, kind of build stage at the moment. I'm just going to give you a quick overview of how we got to this stage. This isn't finished quite yet um, and I'm going to produce a, a full video of all the steps. So uh, we started with this base here um, and the hole that we cut using a jigsaw uh, was the same diameter as the fitball when it was pumped up. So the football would have been quite a bit higher and uh, the actual bottom of the football was just just off the uh, off the ground and then we built up this form at the front and this gave us our shape here this area of this front area of the oven and the chimney we're actually going to put a copper pipe this copper pipe you can see in the background we're going to put that into the chimney hole now what we did was we created a bit of a recess here which we did quite a bit of research on really to make sure we got the right size um, so we produced that little recess and that gave us this this here and the idea is we're going to have a door a, a, an actual vermiculite and cement door which can can come out with a handle so I'll give you the steps for those a little later on now the here uh, this little former was really simple it's just some 2x4 and some uh, just some plywood. Um, made it nice and strong and the, uh, so the coloured plastic here you can see is just some old thin chopping boards. What we did was on the area of the door, the door frame here, we used a really fine vermiculite mix. <clears throat> so as you can see here we had a slight issue when we pulled the former off we pulled it off a bit too quickly and it ended up um, forming a little crack so we just ground it out with a dremel and just uh, filled it on the outside and on the inside and we're gonna finish the outside with a fine mix of vermiculite and probably this this C mix um, red oxide powder and that's gonna give us a nice kind of red terracotta finish to our oven <coughs> so the materials we used were this, was this stuff here, vermiculite. We actually used a coarse grade, but I think the next oven that I make, we're going to use, we're going to use some uh, finer material. So you can see the si kind of size of this stuff. It's uh, very, very light, and we just mix that with cement to give us this kind of hard looking shell so we're going to finish this off we'll probably give it a little light sanding and then uh, and then we'll finish it with that final screed layer which will just be the fine vermiculite the cement and red oxide powder So here we have the form for the door. Just used a bit of core flute, Corex, whatever you want to call it. Just uh, put it into place with some nails. This has allowed us to get the right depth for our door, which is going to go into this area here. So this is going to be uh, made out of fine vermiculite mix. So we'll go uh, probably five to one vermiculite to cement um, make it quite wet so it's uh, a good a good mixture and then uh, we'll, we'll make that section and set this into it we'll set this into the actual mold and then uh, the second the second mix will be going in there packing it in hopefully So here we were adding the vermiculite mix to the form and we decided to pull the coat hanger out, um, add the mix, uh, spread it out and then set the coat hanger in to the mix, which seemed like the best idea. Um, as you can see, the mix is quite wet. That was a good thing. Um, it did look like we had some moisture coming out of the bottom of the form, but in fact, it worked out really well. The main thing we would have changed is we would have put a lot more red oxide into the door 
because when it dried it came out quite pink but this was just a prototype um, here you can see we were just adding in that wire uh, with the bit sticking up was for the handle So what we actually found when we uh, when the handle dried and we took off the form that it actually left two dents in the upright door section. So in future, uh, we'd advise uh, making the flat door section first and then uh, creating the handle bit after the flat section had dried. That way you wouldn't get the indents in the final door. Here we've got the base which we're going to put the oven so we're going to put an edge around here we're going to fill it with sand this is uh, five mil exterior treated plywood and then we're going to use these fire bricks to go on top um, and then hopefully the oven will just slot on top of there this material here was just treated 2x4 um, smooth cut and uh, just a bit of old pallet wood underneath so we put our edge pieces around the uh, table and uh, made sure they were securely fastened with um, exterior galvanized screws um, we could have filled the inside edges at this stage but we used a plastic liner and then put the sand on top of this so the sand had to be leveled out um, so we could set our fire bricks in. Um, we did a bit of guesstimating here and uh, ended up having to add quite a bit more sand than we thought because we wanted the bricks up level and flush with the top of the edge boards. So we got them nice and tight um, so that we could uh, ensure a good uh, fit and uh, that way we'd only had to really add a bit of sand into the uh, into the gaps so once we got all the blocks in we uh, laid the oven shell onto the blocks and uh, we had to just make sure we were all lined up where we wanted it and we uh, noticed there was a slight gap at the back. We drew around the shell just using a marker and this is where we were needed to uh, put our wet fine vermiculite, -like mic uh, fine vermiculite mix with cement. So we just put the oven on it, made sure there were no gaps, um, tidied up the edge just with a scraper and let that set. So that didn't take too long because it was quite a hot day. Um, and we just kind of gradually just brushed it out as it dried. So then we needed to make the fine mix for the top. So it's five parts fine mix, uh, one part cement, and we put heaps of red oxide. So we probably put about 700 grams of red oxide into this mix. So as it was uh, being applied, um, it was a warm day and we, it did set quite quickly. So we ended up spraying it just with a fine mist spray gun. Um, and actually it came out with quite a nice finish in the end um, so we just were quite careful when we were brushing away all the excess um, to do the chimney we uh, blocked up a big gap underneath the chimney hole with some blocks of wood here we've got our piece of copper pipe that we've just cut and sat on top of a piece of cardboard which was blocking the hole at the bottom because the chimney was smaller than the hole we just filled this gap with a fine cement vermiculite mix so we were really happy how the uh, the finish turned out and uh, the, probably the only thing we would change is the door and we'd end up painting the door with a oxide and water mix. So 
So if you have any questions, uh, just leave them in the comment section below. And please subscribe to my channel. Um, always making lots of funny projects at school uh, with the students and always good to hear feedback from other YouTubers.